Good evening, class. Good evening, class. Last time we discussed secondary education as well as the curriculum studies. Today, we will be talking about the secondary education curriculum. I said today we will be discussing secondary education curriculum. Remember what we said and um, said last time concerning curriculum. So today we relate it to secondary education. So when we take a careful and systematic look, we will see as into the educational system. We will see the arrangement and systematic process being arranged, and it is called a curriculum of studies. So that is why our first sentence says a, a curriculum is, or at this level anyway, a careful and systematic process is arranged as the curriculum of studies for the learner at this level of education. Actually, at every level of education, there is a systematic process being arranged. There is a systematic process arranged for the learners to have that experience. And that is called curriculum of studies. So in this arrangement, then we are now talking about that of secondary education. In this arrangement, as was touched in the first lecture concerning secondary education, we know that secondary education has two divisions. Secondary education has two divisions. The first one is the one we, the, the one that is called basic seven to nine, which is the last stage of the primary education. And the second division is SS one to three, which we know from there, one will now write an examination. That is the uh, SSCE, the O level examination. So we have two levels, the one for just one to three, that is basic seven to nine, and the SS one to three, two divisions. As they are two, we also have two separate curricula for them. But the other one, the first one, that is basic seven to nine, is actually like a foundation for the SS one to three. So in considering the second secondary education curriculum, we are going to make use of Lagos State as a case study. It's not really actually, it's not really the, that the, it's not, the difference between it and others are, uh, is not really clear. What I mean is, all of them are, all the states are drawing from the same curriculum. But you know, because you know, each state has, may have a particular thing that will make it look a bit different from the others. I mean seven to nine, basic seven to nine. But the SS one to three is the same all over the country. So we are going to make use of Lagos State as our case study. So, a committee was set up, you know, in 2013 by the then Lagos State Commissioner for Education. That committee was critically, was to critically analyze the operation of 
the secondary education in the state, of course. At the consideration of this committee concerning the curriculum, concerning the curriculum of the secondary education, the committee came up with an operational process of teaching learning process. This process, this operational process has been in use since that time. Some of us that are in school in Lagos State will know that some of the things we are going to, in fact, all the things we are going to discuss now is what is obtainable in our secondary school in Lagos, in our secondary schools in Lagos State. So the committee came up with this, number one, that all schools in Lagos State must teach Yoruba language. Remember, when we discussed the other time, we mentioned teaching with the mother tongue almost in every level of education. So that is why in Lagos State and in other states in the Western region, Yoruba language is very important and it is made compulsory. And that is why at the basic education certificate examination, it is one of the compulsory subjects that must be, it is one of the compulsory subjects, sorry. Then, but it is to be taught from primary school. Because remember, the basic uh, certificate exam one is to take as JS3, started from just to a basic one in primary school. So you have all that you have been doing from basic one to basic nine, then you have the examination taken. So the first thing they say is that Yoruba language should be taught in Lagos State schools. Also, the second one says, relevant literature tests listed in the scheme of work should be approved by us, by teachers, as in the teachers should use them for reading. Thirdly, all private schools must be mandated to use the national curriculum. All private schools are mandated to use the national curriculum. But I do ask my students in the class, why do we have some schools using British curriculum, some schools using American curriculum? What happens to the Nigerian curriculum? And here, the Lagos State says, all private schools must be mandated to use the national curriculum. But there is a clause there. However, those who use a foreign one could adopt the local type if they wish. Anyway, we are not going to question this now. But before now, we have been discussing this. So the, one of the things the committee came up with is the private schools should use the national curriculum, but if they wish, if they are using the foreign one, if they wish, they can adopt the national one as well. Meaning it's likely a school we have a dual system of teaching. Okay, number four says, examination board should regulate the type of textbooks for use in all schools. This is very important. So that schools will not just came, uh, you know, will not just decide on what they want to use. There should be a regulatory body. The next one says, gifted and talented children must be given ample consideration, but special schools could be set up in the sixth education districts for them. For who? For the gifted and talented children, as well as the special schools. Special schools, who must have special schools in the districts. I know we know what we mean by special schools. 
those with it, it's the there are schools that accommodate those with special um disabilities certain disabilities that is they may not they will not understand education very well when they are in the normal class with others so there should be a special school for them or there should be special schools for them in the district six district the next one says children with disabilities must be given considerations through inclusive education center for learning we also have Every school must be mandated to have functional clubs, and jet club, homemakers club, and so on and so forth. Even there, I hope we know there is French club. There is also music club and others. These clubs, you know, ginger the children, they have a part to play in the life of the children. Remember this, this level, the children are being integrated solely in the society. So when we have these clubs, they will be able to, you know, they will start mingling with the society through their mates in the school. The next one says, basic education certificate examination should be conducted in the middle of June, I mean, at the end of the J, um, at the end of J3 or basic nine so in the middle of june in order to ensure that the syllabi are covered that is those things we use to teach them the syllables we use to teach them in the school we make use of in teaching them we will be able to cover them by this time of the year the next one says examiners should be well remunerated so that they will be able, it will be attractive to mark. Actually, the payment is nothing to write home about compared with what they take, uh, what the work done. The next, the next one says, aptitude tests for streaming of students into vocational interests and other competencies of students must be encouraged in all schools. You know, aptitude tests. Then, we have research work and deductive learning should be encouraged in all the levels of education in Lagos State. So let's now look at this. By the time we look at all that we mentioned that the committee came up with, there is a kind of step taken. When we have subjects to be offered at this level, then they are listed, and the number of uh, the number of uh, periods to be taken are also listed. This number of periods also helps, you know, the school to map up time for the clubs, for the social activities where children mingle themselves. So here we say, in attaining the above, subjects to be offered at the school, this particular level, we are listed below with the number of periods per week. Of course, some of us, the our teachers, I always say, we have English language five times in a week, especially in basic classes. But when we get to SS, it is reduced to four times in a week. So we have all the subjects given the number of periods they will be taught by their teachers in basic one or basic seven to nine. We are now talking about only the basic seven to nine. That is the JS one to three. So before I move forward, remember, we have just outlined what the committee came up with. So let's now see on the table before you, you can see the number of subjects to be studied in Lagos states, likewise in other states, and the number of 
um, the number of um, periods allocated to them. We have English language, mathematics. English language and mathematics are to be taken five times in a week. No one is four times in a week, but we have Yoruba, basic science, basic tech, computer studies to be taken three times in a week. Why the rest of these subjects are to be taken two times in a week? I want to say, if you're a teacher, I will advise you to make sure that you take the lead. Lead by an, that show yourself as an example that no matter the number of periods allocated to this, make sure you cover your scheme of work for the term. Because if you look at civic education, social studies, you know those courses, those subjects are vast. But here we have just two times in a week. We have just two times in a week. So teachers are encouraged to make sure that are encouraged to cover their scheme of work. Then when we get to the senior, the second level of secondary education, that is the senior class, SS1, SS2, and SS3. Those that will be writing the ordinary, exa ordinary level examination, that is YEC. We have some changes with numerous subjects to be taken. But as we know, these subjects, as they are 29, will not be taken, all of them will not be taken by one student. At this level, we are to choose. So when a child is in SS1, the child is expected to take up to 10. But before then, let's go through the subjects. We have um, English language, civ uh, general mathematics to be taken four times in a week, as well as biology, physics, chemistry, accounting, and all that. They are there before you. There are many of them that will be taken four times in a week. Later, we understand why they are like that. Okay, we are not going to analyze each, uh, we analyze the table as in the subjects because we have a lot to do. Let's quickly see the, the end of the table. We started with English language and ended with Yoruba, Hausa, Igbo language or languages. So here, yeah, what we are saying is that even made us to see uh, the, the service up to 29 is this, every child has an interest. So the interest will be registered in the subjects that the child will do that will lead him to his career in life. These subjects are guided, the child is guided to take some of these subjects. How would the child be guided? The child will be advised by the counselor in the school to make sure the child takes up the relevant subjects that will lead the child to what he would like to be in future. For instance, a child would like to be a, a lawyer, then what would the child, what would you expect the child to read in school? You, the teacher or the counselor, is in the best position to advise this child. So that's why we now have a lot of them up to 29. So we are going to analyze them. Every student must attend the basic certificate examination, that is for JS3, at the completion of the junior secondary education. This is mandatory because it is what shows that you actually attended basic one to nine. But I want to ask a question. Why would some of our parents, parents prevent their children from taking this examination? I have experienced it several times. Some parents will say, they know that it's actually not compulsory, but it is made compulsory. What I mean is, without it, the child can still proceed to 
senior secondary. They know that they have no needs. That's why some of them will now hide under the umbrella of no money to say that my child will not take this. Maybe he, the child will take it in SS1. And when that child gets SS1, the child will not take it again. They will not allow the child to take it because they want to save money. But they don't know what, to, what, what Nigeria will come up with tomorrow. So if we have parents like this in our schools, please let's advise them to do what? Allow their children to take this. It is not expensive. They should allow their children to take this examination. So the, it is actually made compulsory, even though their parents are not really abiding by it. This, it is, this is mandatory because it is the certificate that shows that you have actually gone through basic one to nine. At the junior secondary, a student must have at least eight subjects passed. The child is expected to pass eight subjects and at most 11 subjects in which students will be streamed into the field of qualification for future. That is, in every school, they, they allow the children to take all these subjects and the child is expected to pass very well eight subjects. Why at the senior secondary level? Each student is expected to study a minimum of 10 subjects in his first year. That is first year, I mean, is SS1. The child is expected to study a minimum of 10 subjects. But I have seen some teachers who say, is it not better we just drill them in the ones they are actually, that they are supposed to have for their career? Instead of, instead of having them disturbed, stressed with 10 subjects. But the decision here is better because by the time the child gets to, by the time the child gets to SS2, SS3. That child may have a second thought and may, may, may want to make amends. So it's better that child takes up to 10. So that when the child gets to SS2 or SS3, if the child decides to drop the other one, so be it. So instead of restricting that child, or let us not restrict that child to eight subjects that we think or nine that will think the child will write in examination, external examination. Then in SS2 class, this same child is expected to study the maximum of 10 subjects and a minimum of nine, and a minimum of nine. What are we talking about? The child will not take anything less than nine subjects. Why in SS3, the child is expected to take a maximum of nine subjects and minimum of eight subjects. Why? Remember, at this level, the child will shortly write the external examination. In all these subjects, the student is expected to attain credit level in six, at least six related subjects that will qualify him to gain admission into any of the higher institutions. When you gain admission, when you go to the university, some that will write jump, you know, the, the university will say, you, we are expecting at least five credits. But if that child has at least six credits, you know, because the child is supposed to read, if the child is not qualified in the other one, having six credits, the child can make a little adjustment. So in all these subjects, the student is expected to attend credit level in six related subjects for a qualification entry into the tertiary institution of his choice. 
each of the tertiary institutions has a list of subjects a candidate must have credited at the senior secondary certificate examination. Why he must have passed the jam, the examination. In making the career choice at the senior secondary school level, the student is exposed to four groups of courses. That is, all these courses we saw, that is for SS1 to 3, up to 9, 29, 29 of them, we have major groups, four of them. In these groups, there are different interests, as in, in these groups, certain children make their different interests. The first group is science and mathematics. The second one is business studies. The third one is humanities, Why the fourth one is technology. In each of these groups, there are subjects that are related to them. If I should be in commercial class, you will not expect me to be studying for that maths. You will not expect me to go into the class, you know, that's, that, that's in chemistry or physics. No. So these four groups have peculiar subjects meant for them. So if a child is in science, the child has related subjects to be studied as a, as a science student. If the child is in commercial or business studies, the child has some courses. So here we have science and mathematics group. We have chemistry, physics, further maths, agriculture, physical education stroke health education as well as technical drawing in business studies we have accounting commerce store management office practice insurance while in humanities we have yoruba stroke Igbo stroke Hausa. literature in english geography government CRUK stroke IRK history visual abstract music, French Arabic, and economics. And the last group, that is group D, technology group. Here we have technical drawing, we have mental work, stroke woodwork, we have basic electronics, as well as auto mechanics. So a child that knows what he wants to do, as guided by the counselor, educational counselor in the school, or as guided by the teachers in charge, will be told, will be advised to take these uh, subjects according to the group, according to what the child wants to be in future. Furthermore, a student is expected to offer five core subjects at which he is supposed to attend credit level. We have English language compulsory, mathematics compulsory, civic education compulsory, biology compulsory, and a trade subject. In a trade subject, most times we have economics. You see many of them going in for economics as if, you know, so these five are very compulsory. Then finally, if you have these five compulsory subjects and you now have some, about three or four from your own group, let's say I am in humanities, I have, I have to pass English language, mathematics, civic education, biology, economics, those are four, uh, five core ones. Then in my group, I would take government, I would take CROS, I would take literature in English, and I will also take French. Do you understand? So you see, in my own group, as in humanities, I have taken three or four, and I will now add them to the compulsory ones, English, 
language and the rest. Remember, Yoruba is composed as in one language is composed as well. So it is actually from a group, it's from humanities. It actually helps us as a mother tongue. So what we are now saying is the child will combine the five compulsory ones as well as three or four from his group. That's exactly the analysis we are making here. So the student is expected to pass these five core subjects as well as three or four from subjects from his group that will prepare him for his career choice. In all, the students will have eight or nine subjects passed. That, that is, the student is expected to pass eight to nine subjects very well. This is the careful and systematic process arranged as the curriculum of studies at the secondary education, at the secondary level of education. Let me, let, let me just bring the relationship between the first sentence and the, of this lesson and the last sentence. The first sentence says, a careful and systematic process is arranged as the curriculum of studies for the learner as at this level of education, secondary education. Why the concluding part says, in all, in what the concluding part says, this is the careful and systematic process arranged as the curriculum of studies at the secondary level of education. Before we recap or we summarize properly, let's take our let's take our assignment. Number one says, as an educationist, state your position. Why a child should not be prevented from writing basic education certificate examination. Let me take it again. As an educationist, state mm -hmm. your position while a child should not be prevented from writing basic education certificate examination. And the second assignment says, give your professional advice to two different children, or three rather, please change it to three, to three different children that want to study the following at the tertiary level of education. Give your professional advice to three different children. I mean three, not two. Initially, I wrote two. Now, I change it to three because uh, there was a mistake there. I listed three, but I did not put the figure three. Rather, I put the figure two. So give your professional advice to three different children that want to study the following at the tertiary level of education. Number uh, A part of it says banking and finance. What is your professional advice to this child? B says law. What is your professional advice? to a child that wants to read law in the university. And the third one says food science, or some, some university will say food science and technology. What is your professional advice as an educationist to this child? What are the things, anyway, you are going to be a counselor? Cancel this child very well so that the child will not make the mistake of his life. So let us recap. Okay, always send the assignment to the email amaechig1962 at gmail.com. And the email again, amaechig1962 at gmail.com. So let's now recap as a way of summarizing because time is no longer our friend. 
This time up, your time is up. I'm already done anyway. I just tried to recap. Okay. Thank you very much. As we have seen a careful and systematic process arranged as the curriculum of studies for the learner at the secondary education level. Thank you very much. God bless you. I'll see we meet.